you know, really disappointing game with the outcome. You know, have the number one team in the country on the ropes. You know, have a chance to, you know, beat them at home here, and we don't get it done. So, if you're going to play that team and or beat the team, you got to basically play perfect, and we didn't do that. We obviously didn't play well on defense. Didn't tackle well. Um, you know, went four or four on fourth down, which was huge. So it's kind of a shame that we weren't able to pull it off. I mean, I would have never guessed you'd see an SEC game looking at these stats here and three punts in the entire game. And someone just said the most most points in the history of SEC regulation game, you know, especially against, you know, Coach Saban and that defense. So kind of a waste. Dennis, you're up. Seems to see what it says. Yeah, can you hear me OK? Yeah. Can you hear me OK? I can, Dennis. Yeah, oh, hey, Lane. Hey. Lane, uh, what's happening in general to, you know, offensively and defensively in this game? Uh, in the SEC today, the average team gave up 33 points. Um, you know, there's been a scoring record set in the last few years. We can talk about tonight all night, but, but what's happening with defensive football, do you think? I don't know, because it's not tempo, because, you know, there's people that don't do tempo and, you know, put up a lot of yards, just like these guys. You know, Sark, they don't do tempo. So I don't think it, people would have thought it was tempo. Um, that's been around for years. You know, maybe COVID, missing spring ball and missing the tackling in that and fundamentals, maybe has something to do with it. But I just would, I would have never guessed this. You know, I joked with the coach afterwards. I talked to him, you know, hey, I thought they played, played defense in the SEC, you know, like just joking with him because, you know, he was kind of laughing about the defense. So I don't, you know, this is three games in a row like this. I would not have thought this. How, how much do you feel, you know, responsible or take credit for what you did beginning in 2014? At, at Alabama when things changed up offensively? I don't know. I mean, I wish I kept saying that today. You know, I wish Sark wasn't over there and they were running the old Alabama offense. I said it about 10 times on the headset. Like, so, I mean, I was thinking, played coach twice. The first time was 12-10, you know, with only field goals. And they scored one touchdown. And so what would that have been like today had we known this offense back then just on our side and not on their side? So. You know, be careful, <laughs> you know, what you do. Thanks. Nick Sus. Lane, you mentioned it's three weeks in a row with this defense kind of getting beaten up. Do you think there is something that can be done with the personnel you have on this team to fix the defense this year? Or do you think that it's just kind of you guys are a little overmatched with the talent you inherited? I hope so, you know. Um, you know I just told the players, don't be happy, you know, Fans are standing ovation. We're walking off, and I was very confused about that. You know, we lost. Um, so, not that I don't appreciate the fans doing that, but make sure the players understand we came here to win. We didn't come here to play close and cover spreads or any of that crap. So, I um, told them they have tomorrow off, and they got to come back to work. We got to get better. You know, um, you just don't get chances like this, and I think kids don't understand that. You know, you don't get many chances to beat the number one team in the country, the best program, you know, in the entire country, and it's right there to take. Going off of that, just what do you think the step is to turn this team from a team that was that close to a team that can win in these games? Well, we won last week, you know, and so, I mean, there's so many times this week that, you know, if we make a stop, we get one turnover, things are totally changed. So, you know, or we, you know, finish a drive and don't kick a field goal. You know, <clears throat> so one team seven of eight in the red zone. They are worth seven of seven. So very unusual. Parish Alford. When you talk about uh, opportunities and, and not that many of them to win a game like this, how much pressure uh, does it put on your offensive players when they? feel like they have to match this team uh, touchdown for touchdown. I felt like that. You know, that's why I 
the onside kick, you know, uh, earlier in the game. Uh, I just felt like, hey, we weren't stopping them. What's the difference if we give them the ball at the 50 or, you know, and they got a great returner anyway, so they may bring it out there. So that's why we tried the surprise onside, which we were close to getting just to try to gain a possession because they weren't stopping us, we weren't stopping them. Nate Gabler. You guys kind of finally got something positive out of the running game this week. Was that just a product of this game, or did you see something that you kind of liked there moving forward? Like I said, I was kind of surprised with that. We struggled to run the ball. This is a great, you know, no one runs the ball normally on these guys. And so, you know, that was good to see. And actually, I was surprised at halftime saying, all right, we need to run the ball more, you know, because I came into the game saying we're going to have to throw the ball 50 times. You know, have a chance in this game. So, you know, I think our line did a good job and Bax did a good job too. Moving forward with the running backs, is, do you expect kind of just a 50 50 split back there or is it just a hot hand or how do you anticipate those carries going? I thought Snoop ran. I mean, Ely's, we know how fast he is, but I thought Snoop ran really well today. Um, and not a lot of negative runs. You know, five yards between the two of them lost, um, which had been an issue coming into the game, so that was really good to see. Tyler Gomez. Hey, Coach. Um, I was just wondering if you had any updates on Matt's injury that happened towards the end of the game. I don't. He must be all right because he came back in the game the next play, so. Nick Sass. Lane, you talked about that conversation you had with Coach Say after the game, just pitching against him. I know you're not one on one against him, but just kind of what's the takeaway from that first experience here? Well, I'm not going to say exactly what he said, but it was pretty cool to hear what he said. Um, you know, I just told him, hey, go win it all, you know? So they got a great team. Um, they're going to be hard to stop, and they got a chance to win it. So I told him to go win it all. Any further questions for Coach? Hey, uh, Ryan, what did, uh, did, did you get a chance to talk with Ben about the snap and, and what happened there in the middle of the fourth on that drive? We've struggled with snaps, you know, in both uh, the first two games. So this one caught us. Matt's caught a lot of them, you know, and saved us on some. So we changed how he was snapping. But, you know, that, that got us big time. I think it was minus 20 yards or something. Any further questions for Coach? Yeah, I, I have one. Um, Lane, I guess, like, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with... Um, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with, like, the number two team in the country and, you know, you only being a few games into your tenure here, how close does that kind of mean that you guys are to, like, that level of prominence? Well, it shows you just got to finish games and win all those situations, you know? We had a chance. They've been, whatever, 12 years running, and we just got here. But, you know, the only way you beat those guys, you got to do everything right for the entire game, and we didn't do that. I mean, you're not going to get up 723 yards, you know, and expect to win. All right, thank you, Coach. All right, see you guys.